Ever since the first external Thunderbolt 3 GPU units started to pop up on the market, I've been extremely intrigued with the idea of having a laptop so I can edit on the go, and then having a GPU unit at home so I can come in, plug in my MacBook when I gotta do some heavy duty work. I know a lot of you guys have been intrigued as well as I'm getting lots of comments, Facebook messages, emails, asking about how well this new Apple eGPU development kit works with the MacBook Pro with Hi Sierra. So let's take a look. If you're in the LA area, make sure to check out the Image One Camera and Video Expo this Saturday and Sunday at Hunt Park. They are going to have many of the top manufacturers presenting such as Canon, Sony, Panasonic, Sigma, Tamron, GoPro, and many others, with lots of great deals on gear, as well as food trucks, classes, models, a car show, and lots of different shooting activities so you can test out new gear. Follow the link in the description and use the coupon code EXPO to get in for just $3. So I've been testing out this setup right here. This is a mid-2017 15-inch MacBook Pro. It has the best CPU and the best graphics, so it's a RX 560 4GB model, same as last year's 460, they just renamed it. And the enclosure we have is the Apple Developer Kit. It has an RX 580 8GB model inside. The actual enclosure is available on the market to buy. Uh, it's about $299, but there's other alternatives. Some are cheaper, some are more expensive. So I'm gonna have a link of different options options uh, in the video description that you guys can check out. So the CPU in here is a 3.1 gigahertz i7 and what's very interesting to me and very exciting is how well this CPU performs. If you guys watched my videos on this laptop, um, this mobile chip performs about as well as the 2015 5K iMac with the best CPU available. So the laptop CPUs have been getting so good that in theory, we could take a 15 inch MacBook Pro, which has a quad core CPU, plug it into an external GPU like that one with the RX 580 and get very similar performance to a full on desktop computer with the ability to unplug and edit on the go. So let's take a look at actual performance. Now, unfortunately, I don't have very concrete numbers for everything uh, because even though I'm using the beta version six of High Sierra, which is what supports external GPUs, there are still multiple different bugs. Software hasn't been optimized. And even though I've waited this long to make this video, um, it's just, it's still not completely there. So hopefully in the next month, month and a half, we're gonna get some fixes. And if you guys wanna see uh, an update to this video, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. But from what I've been able to gather and from my experience comparing graphics card CPUs and computers and testing all these video editing programs, I can give you guys some really good estimates and the programs that are not functioning completely correctly and also give you guys some good numbers in the programs that are. So let's start off with Geekbench 4. Geekbench 4 is showing a score of 124,000 in the OpenCL test with the external GPU unit. To give you guys a reference point, the built-in graphics in this MacBook Pro, which has the best graphics available, gets 43,000. So even though we're connecting externally through Thunderbolt and there is a little bit of a loss uh, by doing so, we're still close to three times better performance. That graphics card, if you build a custom computer, you put it into a PCI slot, we'll get about 132,000. So there's a little bit of loss there. What's even more interesting is the RX 580 in the iMac, with the version of that graphics card, the best graphics you can get for the 5K iMac, gets 117,000. So since this has better cooling, it can be clocked slightly higher, and you're gonna get even better graphics performance than the, the best graphics in an iMac. So that's very impressive. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to test out Cinebench R15, because there's no way to choose your graphics card. Even if I plug in an external monitor and run it through there, it still is stuck on the internal graphics. Along with that, Unigen Heaven, which I wanted to test for like gaming performance, same thing, you cannot change it. Uh, with Final Cut and Premiere Pro, I can get the external graphics to work if I plug in an external display. Without their external display, it runs internal, unfortunately. Uh, with the external display, it will run it. Now, unfortunately, once again, in Premiere Pro, when we're editing or we're doing anything, even though you see graphics uh, usage on the external graphics card, it still just gives you a white screen. So there's you can't even see anything. I don't know if it's a bug that needs to be fixed or what. So I didn't pull numbers from Premiere Pro because of that. Um, and then Final Cut, even though everything's working properly, you can edit, the performance right now is actually worse in a good chunk of the different tests. And I know it's a bug because when you start watching, you check your memory and it has eight gigs of memory, it literally just fills up like a loading bar, maxes out, 
and you start getting bad performance. So um, even though I've waited a few months to get a good version of the beta software with improvements, and there have been some good improvements for performance, it still is not working well. So where can we see some good performance? Well, in DaVinci Resolve. Thankfully, in Resolve, you can select which graphics card you wanna use manually. So we don't have to have an external display connected to be able to use uh, that graphics card. And when I selected it, we do definitely see some improvements. And I think the improvements are gonna be even better once uh, the full version of High Sierra comes out because there is a little bit of stuttering uh, when you press the space bar or when you start playing something back for maybe about a half a second. And that stuttering isn't there when you're not using that graphics card. And uh, I think they're gonna tweak it a little bit more and it's gonna get better. So we are seeing some speed improvements in exports compared to the internal graphics between about 30 to 70% percent. Uh, so that is noticeable. The harder you push the system, the bigger difference you get because typically when you have different effects and LUTs and uh, stuff like that, that is usually done by the GPU. So in this case, we have a GPU that's way more powerful and that's where we're seeing those improvements. Now, what's even more interesting and I think what matters even more so is the timeline performance. On this MacBook Pro, uh, editing a 4K project with two LUTs and film grain applied, which kind of like my standard test, it would almost play back uh, that project perfectly without any rendering. And th this is um, A7S2 H.264 files. With that external GPU, we can do a full six LUTs and film grain without any sort of rendering in this H.264 files, and it will play it back uh, without dropping any frames. So it literally matches up to the top and best 5K iMac that you can get. So this is the kind of performance that we wanna see with one of these GPU units. So I'm very excited that we are seeing some of that. Now for all of you Premiere Pro and Final Cut editors, I wanted to give you guys some good educated estimates on how this system will perform comparing to the laptop by itself and comparing to the best 5K iMac that's available right now. Now, since I've been testing out different computers, CPUs, graphics cards, video editing programs for about three years now, I really know how different programs work and I compared uh, the different speeds of the different MacBook Pros, the multiple years of iMacs, and kind of just spent a bunch of time trying to calculate it and get as close as I can uh, to what it would come out so hopefully this helps you guys out. Once again, sorry that these are not concrete numbers like I typically like to do, uh, but this is better than nothing and this should be close to what we're gonna get in a few months when all the software is optimized. For 4K video editing with effects, I expect Premiere Pro to be roughly 15 to 20% faster on a top of the line 5K iMac since the program is more CPU bound. In Resolve, once everything is running smoothly, I expect to see about 30 to 70% better performance with an eGPU. It would be even better than that if the MacBook was available with 32 gigabytes of RAM instead of 16, since Resolve definitely makes use of that extra RAM. For Final Cut, the MacBook Pro with an eGPU should be about 10% slower for easy tasks and about almost as fast as a fully spec'd out 5K iMac in difficult tasks, since it's more GPU reliant. So if you already own a MacBook Pro like I do, and you edit 4K video, especially if you're doing effects, titles, animations, an external GPU is gonna greatly benefit you and really help speed up your video editing workflow. Now, if you don't own one and you're trying to consider between getting a fully spec'd out iMac or a high-end MacBook Pro with a dedicated GPU unit and be able to take your laptop on the go, I would say probably still go with an iMac if you don't absolutely need the portability because it's gonna save you money. Now, if you need the portability, obviously you have to go with a MacBook Pro, but then you can come home and plug into a larger display and have a desktop setup and not just have a display that you plug into so it's nicer to edit, but also have the performance of a desktop setup as well or at least close to it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this video a like. If you guys wanna see more on external GPUs, especially once High Sierra is released and we have better software optimizations, I'm gonna have more tests, be able to give you guys more hard facts. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and enable those notifications so you guys don't miss out on future videos. If you guys have questions, ask in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer them. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.